A dream is a succession of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations that usually occur involuntarily in the mind during certain stages of sleep. The content and purpose of dreams are not fully understood, though they have been a topic of scientific speculation, as well as a subject of philosophical and religious interest, throughout recorded history. Dream interpretation is the attempt at drawing meaning from dreams and searching for an underlying message. The scientific study of dreams is called onirology. Dreams mainly occur in the rapid eye movement, REM, stage of sleep when brain activity is high and resembles that of being awake. REM sleep is revealed by continuous movements of the eyes during sleep. At times, dreams may occur during other stages of sleep. However, these dreams tend to be much less vivid or memorable. The length of a dream can vary, they may last for a few seconds, or approximately 20-30 minutes. People are more likely to remember the dream if they are awakened during the REM phase. The average person has three to five dreams per night, and some may have up to seven, however, most dreams are immediately or quickly forgotten. Dreams tend to last longer as the night progresses. During a full eight-hour night sleep, most dreams occur in the typical two hours of REM. Opinions about the meaning of dreams have varied and shifted through time and culture. Many endorse the Freudian theory of dreams that dreams reveal insight into hidden desires and emotions. Other prominent theories include those suggesting that dreams assist in memory formation, problem solving, or simply are a product of random brain activation. The earliest recorded dreams were acquired from materials dating back approximately 5,000 years, in Mesopotamia, where they were documented on clay tablets. In the Greek and Roman periods, the people believed that dreams were direct messages from deities or deceased persons, and that they predicted the future. Some cultures practiced dream incubation with the intention of cultivating dreams that are of prophecy. Sigmund Freud, who developed the psychological discipline of psychoanalysis, wrote extensively about dream theories and their interpretations in the early 1900s. He explained dreams as manifestations of one's deepest desires and anxieties, often relating to repressed childhood memories or obsessions. Furthermore, he believed that virtually every dream topic, regardless of its content, represented the release of sexual tension. In the Interpretation of Dreams, 1899, Freud developed a psychological technique to interpret dreams and devised a series of guidelines to understand the symbols and motifs that appear in our dreams. In modern times, dreams have been seen as a connection to the unconscious mind. They range from normal and ordinary to overly surreal and bizarre. Dreams can have varying natures, such as being frightening, exciting, magical, melancholic, adventurous, or sexual. The events in dreams are generally outside the control of the dreamer, with the exception of lucid dreaming, where the dreamer is self-aware. Dreams can at times make a creative thought occur to the person or give a sense of inspiration. Ancient History The dreaming is a common term within the animist creation narrative of indigenous Australians for a personal, or group, creation and for what may be understood as the timeless time of formative creation and perpetual creating. The Sumerians in Mesopotamia left evidence of dreams dating back to 3100 BC. According to these early recorded stories, gods and kings, like the 7th century BC scholar King Osir Bonipal, paid close attention to dreams. In his archive of clay tablets, some accounts of the story of the legendary King Gilgamesh were found. The Mesopotamians believed that the soul, or some part of it, moves out from the body of the sleeping person and actually visits the places and persons the dreamer sees in their sleep. Sometimes the god of dreams is said to carry the dreamer. Babylonians and Assyrians divided dreams into good, which were sent by the gods, and bad, sent by demons they also believed that their dreams were omens and prophecies. In ancient Egypt, as far back as 2000 BC, the Egyptians wrote down their dreams on papyrus. 
people with vivid and significant dreams were thought blessed and were considered special. Ancient Egyptians believed that dreams were like oracles, bringing messages from the gods. They thought that the best way to receive divine revelation was through dreaming and thus they would induce, or incubate, dreams. Egyptians would go to sanctuaries and sleep on special dream beds in hope of receiving advice, comfort, or healing from the gods. Classical History In Chinese history, people wrote of two vital aspects of the soul of which one is freed from the body during slumber to journey in a dream realm, while the other remained in the body, although this belief and dream interpretation had been questioned since early times, such as by the philosopher Wang Chong. 2797 AD. The Indian text Upanishads, written between 900 and 500 BC, emphasize two meanings of dreams. The first says that dreams are merely expressions of inner desires. The second is the belief of the soul leaving the body and being guided until awakened. The Greeks shared their beliefs with the Egyptians on how to interpret good and bad dreams, and the idea of incubating dreams. Morpheus, the Greek god of dreams, also sent warnings and prophecies to those who slept at shrines and temples. The earliest Greek beliefs about dreams were that their gods physically visited the dreamers, where they entered through a keyhole, exiting the same way after the divine message was given. Antiphon wrote the first known Greek book on dreams in the 5th century BC. In that century, other cultures influenced Greeks to develop the belief that souls left the sleeping body. Hippocrates, 469-399 BC, had a simple dream theory, during the day, the soul receives images, during the night, it produces images. Greek philosopher Aristotle, 384-322 BC, believed dreams caused physiological activity. He thought dreams could analyze illness and predict diseases. Marcus Tullius Cicero, for his part, believed that all dreams are produced by thoughts and conversations a dreamer had during the preceding days. Cicero's Somnium Scipiones described a lengthy dream vision, which in turn was commented on by Macrobius in his commentary I in Somnium Scipiones. In Abrahamic religions In Judaism Dreams are considered part of the experience of the world that can be interpreted and from which lessons can be garnered. It is discussed in the Talmud, Tractate Birakot 5560. The ancient Hebrews connected their dreams heavily with their religion, though the Hebrews were monotheistic and believed that dreams were the voice of one God alone. Hebrews also differentiated between good dreams, from God, and bad dreams, from evil spirits. The Hebrews, like many other ancient cultures, incubated dreams in order to receive divine revelation. For example, the Hebrew prophet Samuel would lie down and sleep in the temple at Shiloh before the ark and receive the word of the Lord. Most of the dreams in the Bible are in the book of Genesis. Christians mostly shared the beliefs of the Hebrews and thought that dreams were of a supernatural character because the Old Testament includes frequent stories of dreams with divine inspiration. The most famous of these dream stories was Jacob's dream of a ladder that stretches from earth to heaven. Many Christians preach that God can speak to people through their dreams. Ian R. Edgar has researched the role of dreams in Islam. He has argued that dreams play an important role in the history of Islam and the lives of Muslims, since dream interpretation is the only way that Muslims can receive revelations from God since the death of the last prophet, Muhammad. In Hinduism In the Manjikya Upanishad, part of the Veda scriptures of Indian Hinduism, a dream is one of three states that the soul experiences during its lifetime the other two states being the waking state and the sleep state. Dreams and Philosophical Realism Some philosophers have concluded that what we think of as the real world could be or is an illusion, an idea known as the skeptical hypothesis about ontology. The first recorded mention of the idea was by Zhuangzi, and it is also discussed in Hinduism, which makes extensive use of the argument in its writings. 
It was formally introduced to Western philosophy by Descartes in the 17th century in his Meditations on First Philosophy. Stimulus, usually an auditory one, becomes a part of a dream, eventually then awakening the dreamer. Post-classical and medieval history Some indigenous American tribes and Mexican civilizations believe that dreams are a way of visiting and having contact with their ancestors. Some Native American tribes used vision quests as a rite of passage, fasting and praying until an anticipated guiding dream was received, to be shared with the rest of the tribe upon their return. The Middle Ages brought a harsh interpretation of dreams. They were seen as evil, and the images as temptations from the devil. Many believed that during sleep, the devil could fill the human mind with corrupting and harmful thoughts. Martin Luther, founder of Protestantism, believed dreams were the work of the devil. However, Catholics such as St. Augustine and St. Jerome claimed that the direction of their lives was heavily influenced by their dreams. In art The depiction of dreams in Renaissance and Baroque art is often related to biblical narrative. Examples are Joachim's Dream, 1304-1306, from the Skrovna Chapel fresco cycle by Giotto, and Jacob's Dream, 1639, by Giuseppe de Ribera. Dreams and dark imaginings are the theme of several notable works of the Romantic era, such as Goya's Etching the Sleep of Reason Produces Monsters, c. 1799, and Henry Fuseli's painting The Nightmare, 1781. Salvador Dali's dream caused by the flight of a bee around a pomegranate a second before awakening, 1944, also investigates this theme through absurd juxtapositions of a nude lady, tigers leaping out of a pomegranate, and a spider-like elephant walking in the background. Henri Rousseau's last painting was The Dream. L.E. Reve, The Dream, is a 1932 painting by Pablo Picasso. In literature, dream frames were frequently used in medieval allegory to justify the narrative. The Book of the Duchess and the Vision Concerning Piers Plowman are two such dream visions. Even before them, in antiquity, the same device had been used by Cicero and Lucian of Samosata. They have also featured in fantasy and speculative fiction since the 19th century. One of the best-known dream worlds is Wonderland from Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, as well as Looking Glass Land from its sequel, Through the Looking Glass. Unlike many dream worlds, Carroll's logic is like that of actual dreams, with transitions and flexible causality. Other fictional dream worlds include the dreamlands of H.P. Lovecraft's Dream Cycle and the never-ending stories world of Fantasia which includes places like the Desert of Lost Dreams, the Sea of Possibilities and the Swamps of Sadness. Dream worlds, shared hallucinations and other alternate realities feature in a number of works by Philip K. Dick, such as The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldritch and Ubik. Similar themes were explored by Jorge Luis Borges, for instance in The Circular Ruins. In Popular Culture Modern popular culture often conceives of dreams, like Freud, as expressions of the dreamer's deepest fears and desires. The film version of The Wizard of Ounce, 1939, depicts a full-color dream that causes Dorothy to perceive her black and white reality and those with whom she shares it in a new way. In films such as Spellbound, 1945, The Manchurian Candidate, 1962, Field of Dreams, 1989, and Inception, 2010, the protagonists must extract vital clues from surreal dreams. Most dreams in popular culture are, however, not symbolic, but straightforward and realistic depictions of their dreamers' fears and desires. Dream scenes may be indistinguishable from those set in the dreamers' real world a narrative device that undermines the dreamers and the audience's sense of security and allows horror film protagonists, such as those of Carrie, 1976, Friday the 13th, 1980, or An American Werewolf in London, 1981, 
to be suddenly attacked by dark forces while resting in seemingly safe places. In speculative fiction, the line between dreams and reality may be blurred even more in the service of the story. Dreams may be psychically invaded or manipulated, Dreamscape, 1984, The Nightmare on Elm Street Films, 1984-2010, Inception, 2010, or even come literally true, as in The Lathe of Heaven, 1971. In Ursula K. L. E. Ginn's book, The Lathe of Heaven, 1971, the protagonist finds that his effective dreams can retroactively change reality. Peter Weir's 1977 Australian film The Last Wave makes a simple and straightforward postulate about the premonitory nature of dreams, from one of his aboriginal characters, that, dreams are the shadow of something real. In Kyle Gold's novel Green Fairy from the Dangerous Spirits series, the protagonist, Soul, experiences the memories of a dancer who died 100 years before through absinthe-induced dreams and after each dream something from it materializes into his reality. Such stories play to audiences' experiences with their own dreams, which feel as real to them. Dynamic Psychiatry Freudian View In the late 19th century, Psychotherapist Sigmund Freud developed a theory that the content of dreams is driven by unconscious wish fulfillment. Freud called dreams the royal road to the unconscious. He theorized that the content of dreams reflects the dreamer's unconscious mind and specifically that dream content is shaped by unconscious wish fulfillment. He argued that important unconscious desires often relate to early childhood memories and experiences. Freud's theory describes dreams as having both manifest and latent content. Latent content relates to deep unconscious wishes or fantasies while manifest content is superficial and meaningless. Manifest content often masks or obscures latent content. In his early work, Freud argued that the vast majority of latent dream content is sexual in nature, but he later moved away from this categorical position. In Beyond the Pleasure Principle he considered how trauma or aggression could influence dream content. He also discussed supernatural origins in dreams and occultism, a lecture published in New Introductory Lectures on Psychoanalysis. Jungian and Other Views Carl Jung rejected many of Freud's theories. Jung expanded on Freud's idea that dream content relates to the dreamer's unconscious desires. He described dreams as messages to the dreamer and argued that dreamers should pay attention for their own good. He came to believe that dreams present the dreamer with revelations that can uncover and help to resolve emotional or religious problems and fears. Jung wrote that recurring dreams show up repeatedly to demand attention, suggesting that the dreamer is neglecting an issue related to the dream. He believed that many of the symbols or images from these dreams return with each dream. Jung believed that memories formed throughout the day also play a role in dreaming. These memories leave impressions for the unconscious to deal with when the ego is at rest. The unconscious mind reenacts these glimpses of the past in the form of a dream. Jung called this a day residue. Jung also argued that dreaming is not a purely individual concern, that all dreams are part of one great web of psychological factors. Fritz Perls presented his theory of dreams as part of the holistic nature of Gestalt therapy. Dreams are seen as projections of parts of the self that have been ignored, rejected, or suppressed. Jung argued that one could consider every person in the dream to represent an aspect of the dreamer, which he called the subjective approach to dreams. Perls expanded this point of view to say that even inanimate objects in the dream may represent aspects of the dreamer. The dreamer may, therefore, be asked to imagine being an object in the dream and to describe it, in order to bring into awareness the characteristics of the object that correspond with the dreamer's personality. Neurobiology Accumulated observation has shown that dreams are strongly associated with REM rapid eye movement sleep, during which an electroencephalogram, EEG, shows brain activity that, among sleep states, is most like wakefulness. 
participant remembered dreams during NREM sleep are normally more mundane in comparison. During a typical lifespan, a person spends a total of about six years dreaming, which is about two hours each night. Most dreams only last 5 to 20 minutes. It is unknown where in the brain dreams originate, if there is a single origin for dreams or if multiple portions of the brain are involved, or what the purpose of dreaming is for the body or mind. During REM sleep, the release of the neurotransmitters norepinephrine, serotonin, and histamine is completely suppressed. During most dreams, the person dreaming is not aware that they are dreaming, no matter how absurd or eccentric the dream is. The reason for this may be that the prefrontal cortex, the region of the brain responsible for logic and planning, exhibits decreased activity during dreams. This allows the dreamer to more actively interact with the dream without thinking about what might happen, since things that would normally stand out in reality blend in with the dream scenery. When REM sleep episodes were timed for their duration and subjects were awakened to make reports before major editing or forgetting of their dreams could take place, subjects accurately reported the length of time they had been dreaming in an REM sleep state. Some researchers have speculated that time dilation effects only seem to be taking place upon reflection and do not truly occur within dreams. This close correlation of REM sleep and dream experience was the basis of the first series of reports describing the nature of dreaming, that it is a regular nightly rather than occasional phenomenon, and is correlated with high-frequency activity within each sleep period occurring at predictable intervals of approximately every 60-90 minutes in all humans throughout the lifespan. REM sleep episodes and the dreams that accompany them lengthen progressively through the night, with the first episode being shortest, of approximately 10-12 minutes duration, and the second and third episodes increasing to 15-20 minutes. Dreams at the end of the night may last as long as 15 minutes, although these may be experienced as several distinct episodes due to momentary arousals interrupting sleep as the night ends. Dream reports can be reported from normal subjects 50% of the time when they are awakened prior to the end of the first REM period. This rate of retrieval is increased to about 99% when awakenings are made from the last REM period of the night. The increase in the ability to recall dreams appears related to intensification across the night in the vividness of dream imagery, colors, and emotions. In other animal species, REM sleep and the ability to dream seem to be embedded in the biology of many animals in addition to humans. Scientific research suggests that all mammals experience REM. The range of REM can be seen across species, dolphins experience minimal REM while humans are in the middle of the scale and the armadillo and the opossum, a marsupial, are among the most prolific dreamers, judging from their REM patterns. Studies have observed signs of dreaming in all mammals studied, including monkeys, dogs, cats, rats, elephants, and shrews. There have also been signs of dreaming in birds and reptiles. Sleeping and dreaming are intertwined. Scientific research results regarding the function of dreaming in animals remain disputable, however, the function of sleeping in living organisms is increasingly clear. For example, sleep deprivation experiments conducted on rats and other animals have resulted in the deterioration of physiological functioning and actual tissue damage. Some scientists argue that humans dream for the same reason other amniotes do. From a Darwinian perspective dreams would have to fulfill some kind of biological requirement, provide some benefit for natural selection to take place, or at least have no negative impact on fitness. In 2000 Antti Rivonchuo, a professor at the University of Turku in Finland, claimed that centuries ago dreams would prepare humans for recognizing and avoiding danger by presenting a simulation of threatening events. The theory has therefore been called the threat simulation theory. According to Tsao Kallis, 2012, dreaming is related to the reactive patterns elicited by encounters with predators, a fact that is still evident in the control mechanisms of REM sleep, see below. Neurological Theories 
Activation Synthesis Theory In 1976 J. Allen Hobson and Robert McCarley proposed a new theory that changed dream research, challenging the previously held Freudian view of dreams as unconscious wishes to be interpreted. They assume that the same structures that induce REM sleep also generate sensory information. Hobson's 1976 research suggested that the signals interpreted as dreams originate in the brainstem during REM sleep. According to Hobson and other researchers, circuits in the brainstem are activated during REM sleep. Once these circuits are activated, areas of the limbic system involved in emotions, sensations, and memories, including the amygdala and hippocampus, become active. The brain synthesizes and interprets these activities, for example, changes in the physical environment such as temperature and humidity, or physical stimuli such as ejaculation, and attempts to create meaning from these signals, result in dreaming. However, research by Mark Soames suggests that dreams are generated in the forebrain, and that REM sleep and dreaming are not directly related. While working in the neurosurgery department at hospitals in Johannesburg and London, Soames had access to patients with various brain injuries. He began to question patients about their dreams and confirmed that patients with damage to the parietal lobe stopped dreaming, this finding was in line with Hobson's 1977 theory. However, Soames did not encounter cases of loss of dreaming with patients having brainstem damage. This observation forced him to question Hobson's prevailing theory, which marked the brainstem as the source of the signals interpreted as dreams. Continual Activation Theory Combining Hobson's activation synthesis hypothesis with Soames' findings, the continual activation theory of dreaming presented by Ji Zhang proposes that dreaming is a result of brain activation and synthesis, at the same time. Dreaming and REM sleep are controlled by different brain mechanisms. Zhang hypothesizes that the function of sleep is to process, encode, and transfer the data from the temporary memory store to the long-term memory store. During NREM sleep the conscious related memory, declarative memory, is processed, and during REM sleep the unconscious related memory, procedural memory, is processed. Zhang assumes that during REM sleep the unconscious part of a brain is busy processing the procedural memory, meanwhile, the level of activation in the conscious part of the brain descends to a very low level as the inputs from the sensory systems are basically disconnected. This triggers the continual activation mechanism to generate a data stream from the memory stores to flow through the conscious part of the brain. Zhang suggests that this pulse-like brain activation is the inducer of each dream. He proposes that, with the involvement of the brain associative thinking system, dreaming is, thereafter, self-maintained with the dreamer's own thinking until the next pulse of memory insertion. This explains why dreams have both characteristics of continuity, within a dream, and sudden changes, between two dreams. A detailed explanation of how a dream is synthesized is given in a later paper. Defensive Immobilization, the Precursor According to Tsao Callis, 2012, REM sleep is an evolutionary transformation of a well-known defensive mechanism, the tonic immobility reflex. This reflex, also known as animal hypnosis or death feigning, functions as the last line of defense against an attacking predator and consists of the total immobilization of the animal, the animal appears dead, cf playing possum. Sao Callis claims that the neurophysiology and phenomenology of this reaction shows striking similarities to REM sleep, a fact that suggests a deep evolutionary kinship. For example, both reactions exhibit brainstem control, paralysis, sympathetic activation, and thermoregulatory changes. Sao Callis claims that this theory integrates many earlier findings into a unified framework. As excitations of long-term memory Eugen Tarno suggests that dreams are ever-present excitations of long-term memory, even during waking life. The strangeness of dreams is due to the format of long-term memory, 
reminiscent of Penfield and Rasmussen's findings that electrical excitations of the cortex give rise to experiences similar to dreams. During waking life an executive function interprets long-term memory consistent with reality checking. Tarnow's theory is a reworking of Freud's theory of dreams in which Freud's unconscious is replaced with the long-term memory system and Freud's dream work describes the structure of long-term memory. Role in Strengthening Semantic Memories A 2001 study showed evidence that illogical locations, characters, and dream flow may help the brain strengthen the linking and consolidation of semantic memories. These conditions may occur because, during REM sleep, the flow of information between the hippocampus and neocortex is reduced. Increasing levels of the stress hormone cortisol late in sleep, often during REM sleep, causes this decreased communication. One stage of memory consolidation is the linking of distant but related memories. Payne and Nadal hypothesize these memories are then consolidated into a smooth narrative similar to a process that happens when memories are created under stress. Robert, 1886, a physician from Hamburg, was the first who suggested that dreams are a need and that they have the function to erase, a, sensory impressions that were not fully worked up, and, b, ideas that were not fully developed during the day. By the dream work, incomplete material is either removed, suppressed, or deepened and included into memory. Robert's ideas were cited repeatedly by Freud in his Die Traum Dudung. Hewlings Jackson, 1911, viewed that sleep serves to sweep away unnecessary memories and connections from the day. This was revised in 1983 by Crick and Mitchison's reverse learning theory, which states that dreams are like the cleaning up operations of computers when they are offline, removing, suppressing, parasitic nodes and other junk from the mind during sleep. However, the opposite view that dreaming has an information handling, memory consolidating function, Henevin and Leconti, 1971, is also common. Psychological Theories Role in Testing and Selecting Mental Schemas Kautz describes dreams as playing a central role in a two-phase sleep process that improves the mind's ability to meet human needs during wakefulness. During the accommodation phase, mental schemas self-modify by incorporating dream themes. During the emotional selection phase, dreams test prior schema accommodations. Those that appear adaptive are retained, while those that appear maladaptive are culled. The cycle maps to the sleep cycle, repeating several times during a typical night's sleep. Alfred Adler suggested that dreams are often emotional preparations for solving problems, intoxicating an individual away from common sense toward private logic. The residual dream feelings may either reinforce or inhibit contemplated action. Evolutionary Psychology Theories Numerous theories state that dreaming is a random byproduct of REM sleep physiology and that it does not serve any natural purpose. Flanagan claims that dreams are evolutionary epiphenomena and they have no adaptive function. Dreaming came along as a free ride on a system designed to think and to sleep. Hobson, for different reasons, also considers dreams epiphenomena. He believes that the substance of dreams have no significant influence on waking actions, and most people go about their daily lives perfectly well without remembering their dreams. Hobson proposed the activation synthesis theory, which states that there is a randomness of dream imagery and the randomness synthesizes dream-generated images to fit the patterns of internally generated stimulations. This theory is based on the physiology of REM sleep and Hobson believes dreams are the outcome of the forebrain reacting to random activity beginning at the brainstem. The activation synthesis theory hypothesizes that the peculiar nature of dreams is attributed to certain parts of the brain trying to piece together a story out of what is essentially bizarre information. However, evolutionary psychologists believe dreams serve some adaptive function for survival. 
Deirdre Barrett describes dreaming as simply thinking in different biochemical state and believes people continue to work on all the same problems personal and objective in that state. Her research finds that anything math, musical composition, business dilemmas. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.